in the back of your mind. Well, look, couldn't you come in here and talk it over like a man instead of leaving me holding the bag? Now, look, fella, you can't just walk away from here and expect to find a job anyplace. You got one? Who with? Forrest? No, thanks. D don't bother. D don't, j just forget it. to me. I'm tired of having to fire away every good man I've got. There's a pocket full of steak I've got to lose it. Oh, that back, Karen. Great. Just great. Karen, would you mind leaving? Forrest, you have no conscience whatsoever. Conscience? You know what I'm talking about. How you have the gall to pirate Bill Mason out from under me is something I'll never know. And it isn't the first time either. I train him and you steal him. Now, wait a minute, baby. You wait a minute. It makes no difference to you that he started with me, that he's considered to be the best typographer in the state and that I taught him his trade. And for what? So you could hijack him, brother? Do you have to bring the church into it? Bill Mason just answered the ad, that's all. I'll bet that's all. I thought he'd been acting a little strange lately. Bill told me he wasn't making enough to support his family. Oh, so you wave a few more dollars under his nose and he quits me cold. That's what I call ethics. Now, hold on. I wouldn't talk about ethics if I were you. What about those high school annuals I had all sewed up? And you come along and underbid me by a third. Why not? Your prices are too high. And your salaries are too low. Then I really blew my top. No magic. Dick Forrest telling me about ethics. Did you tell him you'd never speak to him again, Daddy? Ever? Hmm. I wonder why I didn't think of that. Big people don't do that, Michelle. They have to try to work out their differences. Besides, I have to talk to him again. We both go to the same ward, belong to the same elders quorum. But I did get some satisfaction out of telling that crumb a thing or two. No, it's too bad you two can't have better feelings toward each other. Hmm. Having to rub shoulders each Sunday at church. Now, there's another thing. How can he sit in that elders' quorum like he does each Sunday and pull some of the tricks he does during the week? Well, I guess that's just his idea of business. Yeah, and it works, too. What about the time he beat me out of that war surplus linotype machine? Boy, does it work. Him with his expensive home and then two new cars. It's what I call a Sunday saint if I've ever seen one. But it helps if your father leaves a little money around for you to inherit, too. I want to be there when it happens, Dad. You'll clean him. Little pictures have big ears. I'm not a pitcher. I'm a fullback. Couldn't you, Dad? Couldn't you take him easy? Uh, <clears throat> I think maybe you children better run outside and rake the leaves, huh? Come on, now. Dad, come, come on. Right, right now. Hurry up. Time. No argument. Hurry up. Drum. You know, I wonder if our more scintillating conversations shouldn't be in private. You mean them? Mm-hmm. You know, they're pretty smart little people. I hope Michelle doesn't bring it up tomorrow in show and tell. And Robbie, he imitates everything you do. Well, I didn't say anything so bad. I just said Dick Forrest was a crumb. Oh, dear. You know I'm on your side. But, well, maybe if we looked at things from his point of view, well, we wouldn't be so quick to judge. You know, Dick Forrest may be ahead of me in business, but in the wife department, I take second to nobody. Such a good baby in Sunday school this morning. Didn't even make a sound. I wish I could say the same for your son. Let us all speak kind words to each other. We'd have to sing that song in Sunday school this morning. Where we may be. 
Phil, take the baby in and put her in her playpen. There we go. Say, was that a great lesson President Tibble gave this morning? Oh, yes, it was. Mmm, smells like the roast is done. <laughs> Oh, that does smell good, and I am so hungry. Say, speaking of kind words, how was priesthood meeting this morning? Was um, Dick Forrest there? Yeah, he was there. He's always there. Oh, I'm sorry, Ann. I didn't mean it the way it sounded. I know he has just as much right to go to priesthood as I do. It's just too bad we have to be in the same quorum. Well, I'm sure he feels the same way about it. You know, it's funny, but he's always been very nice to me. I see him occasionally when he brings Pamela to primary. Oh, he can be nice enough, all right. But he must be basically insecure. You know what he did this morning? Mm-mm. Well, we were discussing the Quorum Missionary Fund. And a couple of the boys in the ward are just about ready to go. The Jackson boy and Bob Minton's son. Was he due, but pops up right in the middle of Quorum meeting and volunteers to pay half of Ronnie Jackson's mission. Well, all by himself. What's wrong with that? Seems like a very nice gesture. Yeah, but does he have to be so public about it? The rest of us think we're doing pretty good just to contribute to the fun. Moneybags Forrest the Pharisee comes along, throws his weight around, makes the rest of us look small. Well, Forrest can never make you look small, Dad. You're a lot bigger than he is, aren't you, Dad? Hey, Dad, are we going to do what the bishop said? What did the bishop say? You know, about reading the scriptures. Remember? He asked every family in the ward to read the New Testament before the end of the year. We're supposed to be through the four Gospels by Christmas. What are the four Gospels? Everybody knows that. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Are we going to read them, Dad? Well, uh... Well, the bishop promised that it would help every family in the ward find answers to their problems. Problems? We don't have any problems. Dick Forrest is the guy who's got problems. Why doesn't he read the New Testament? Especially the part, do not your alms before men. Oh, kind words we give shall remember it, and the sun shall forever and forever. Okay, so everybody's got problems. Right now, one of my big problems is I'm just about starved. Well, here, maybe this will hold you. <laughs> Bailey speaking. Oh, hello, President Dayton. How are you? Good. Well, sure. Tonight? What time? Fine, we can make that. Uh, thanks for calling, President. Uh, I'll see you then. But didn't President Dayton give you one clue? Not a hint, sweetheart. All he said was to bring you and be there by 8 o'clock. Hmm, I wonder. I bet I know, Dad. It's like being called into the principal's office. It's about you and Forrest. I bet the state president runs for free. Oh, Robbie. <laughs> Imagine. Me, elders, quorum, president. I just can't believe it. You said that all the way home. You'll be great. But why me? Well, I can't think of anyone who has more leadership potential than my husband. Besides, the state president prayed about this. You were called by inspiration. Ah, uh, sweetheart. It's going to be a real challenge. Hey. Darling, where's the writing paper? It's in that bottom drawer. Let's see now. What do we have in the quorum? There's John Lund. Chris Pearson. Phil Henstrom. <laughs> Dan Brockbank. <laughs> What's funny? I can't wait to see the look on Dick Forrest's face when he finds out that I'm his new elders quorum president. <laughs> Boy. Dear, don't you think we ought to start reading the scriptures tonight? Sweetheart, I don't have time to read the scriptures tonight. I've got to get organized. First things first. 
You know what President Dayton said about the welfare project? All those apples to be picked? I've got to get a move on. Yes. And you remember what the bishop said about how reading the scriptures would help us keep our lives and our homes in order and help us in our church responsibilities. Maybe even in elder scorn. Sweetheart, are you going to support me in this? Now, I've got to do what I've got to do. And right now, I've got to think about some counselors. All right, dear. Darling, Ray Bud's the new elders quorum secretary. What do you think of that? Great. Hey, your breakfast is getting cold. What do you think of that? Right, Phil. Mm -hmm. Next Saturday at the Steak Apple Orchard at 6.30. Yeah, it's a week from today. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Say, that was a great story that President Dayton told, wasn't it? You know, I think if we could get the same response out of the men in our quorum, We'd be able to impress them with the real reasons we're doing all of this. Brotherhood and, and love. Mm-hmm. Okay, Phil. Yeah, right. I'll take the list down to the J's. You take it down to the R's, and I've already asked Lee to contact the rest. Good. Yeah, thanks a lot, Phil. Mm-hmm. Bye. Oh, no. What's the matter? I've got to call Dick Forrest and talk to him about brotherhood, love, and apples. Well, dear, you knew it would come to this sooner or later. Yeah, but I was hoping it would be later so I could work into it gradually. It isn't easy being a leader, is it? No, dear, it isn't. I don't mind the organization stuff. That's easy. It's the people stuff that worries me. But it, it's the people stuff that's important, isn't it? Remember what the Lord said about the worth of a soul. You know, dear, I think tonight's the night we start reading the scriptures. <laughs> but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. All right, Robbie, it's your turn. Right here. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with that judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with that measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Daddy, what's a mote? Well, that's, that's something that blinds you, son. Keeps you from seeing things clearly. Hi. Hi. Uh, need some printing done, lady? <laughs> no, thanks. I need the printer. Oh. Are you ready to come home? In a minute. Dear? You look troubled. Anything wrong? No. Well, I am a little concerned about the quorum. Oh, some of the men having problems? No, they're fine. It's me. I don't understand it. Everything seems to be going OK, only I don't feel right. In what way? Oh, honey, I want to be a good leader. I want to be able to help and strengthen the men in the quorum. I think they like me all right. Somehow I don't feel the acceptance that I need. There's something lacking. But why? I don't know exactly. Pay my tithing, support the leaders of the church, faithful to my little wife. I try to be a good father. I've read the scriptures every night this week now. Now why should I be uneasy about being elders quorum president? You shouldn't. If you do your best, that's all that can be expected of you. 
Oh, say, your first counselor called. He's contacted all of his elders, and they're ready for picking apples. Yeah. Are yours contacted? Oh, but you know who. I just can't bring myself to call him. You will find a way. I have to pick up the children. Are you ready to leave? Sweetheart, why don't you go ahead? I feel like walking home tonight. All right, dear. Bye. Dinner's at 6. See you later. Well, Bailey, being a good leader isn't easy, is it? Like everything else worthwhile, it takes a lot of thought and effort. The scriptures are full of great men, great leaders, and especially the Savior, who was the greatest leader of all. How did he do it? What can I learn from him? For one thing, I could shape up in a few areas myself. I could control my temper and be a bit more thoughtful of my family and of my employees. It's easy to love your family, but what about those who hurt you? That's a little tougher. And yet that's what Jesus said we should do. The Lord also taught us the gospel of repentance. Boy, do I need to put that to use. I remember President McKay saying, that man is greatest who is most Christ-like. And what you think of Christ will largely determine what you will be. What do I think of Christ? And how do I show it? Well, whose turn is it tonight? Yours, Daddy. Mom read to us last night about how Judas got money from chief priests. Don't you remember? Oh, that's right. Yeah, now let's see. Ah, uh, here it is. And the Lord said, Simon, that's another name for Peter. He said, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he might sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Daddy, Peter was already
already an apostle. Wasn't he converted? Was he like Judas? Well, no, son. Peter believed in the Lord, but he wasn't entirely converted. You see, that very night he denied that he knew Christ three times. I guess a lot of us are like that, son. Not completely converted. We deny Christ in lots of little ways by not living the way he taught us. Jesus knew that Peter couldn't strengthen his brethren, couldn't be a good leader until he himself was completely converted, was living the way Christ would have him live. It's right, Lord. Please let this be acceptable in thy sight. I just can't sleep. It's no use. I've got to face up to this thing with Forrest. But it's the toughest thing I've ever done. I know now that he's no more to blame for our trouble than I am. But if I do go to him, how will he react? What would Jesus do in this situation? And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be converted. To be converted is to understand with my heart. Understand Dick Forrest and myself. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. No power or influence can or ought to be maintained by virtue of the priesthood only by persuasion, by long-suffering, by gentleness and meekness, by love unfeigned. By love unfeigned. Come in, Warren. Thanks, Dick. That'll be all, Karen. Dick, I, I've come to apologize. And to ask for your forgiveness. For what? For many things. 
Dick, I'm truly sorry for anything that I may have said or done that has hurt our relationship. Warren, I wish I'd been big enough to come to you first. But you know, a man's pride can be a pretty big hurdle. Nobody realizes that more than I do. Dick, the quorum needs you. I need you. I can't presume to be a leader. Can't presume to lead you or, or anyone else until I can follow the example the Savior set. Learn to lead through love. Dick. You know, there's a, there's a scripture I just can't forget. It says, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I'm really trying to convert myself, Dick. I hope you'll help me. If you'll help me. It's been my fault as much as yours. I better get home. You know how wives are when you're late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> 